It's the robber! Hi everyone, I'm Robber, and I'm part of a dynamic duo called Echip and Robber. I live off-grid in the Intermountain West. This video is episode one of Robber's Ruminations, which will be little short videos of all sorts of different topics. Father's Day is my first episode. Father's Day was celebrated for the first time in Spokane, Washington in 1910 at a YMCA. Sonora Smart Dodd, after hearing a sermon about Mother's Day, went to her preacher and told him that fathers needed to be celebrated as well. Father's Day wasn't a success at first. Sonora enlisted the help of groups that benefited from Father's Day. Tie makers, pipe makers, any group that could benefit from the sale of Father's Day gifts to help promote Father's Day as a holiday. However, people saw it as a commercial endeavor only, not anything really to celebrate fathers, something to counteract the commercial success of Mother's Day. Congress voted against making Father's Day an official national holiday in 1916. It wasn't until 1972 that Father's Day became an officially recognized forever enduring national holiday, signed into law by Richard Nixon. Now for a little bit about my father. I'm named after my dad. His name is Bobby Don. He had red hair and he had a temper sometimes. He was fun loving. He enjoyed fishing. He enjoyed boating and different things like that. My dad took us fishing all the time and I loved to go. Anytime he said, I'm going to go fishing, I was like, I want to go, I want to go. And I was scared to death of the bait and scared to death of the fish. That didn't matter to my dad. He took me anyway. And he was very, very patient when I would not bait my hook and would not take fish off of the hook. I refused to touch them. As a matter of fact, I was scared of liver. And one time we had gone catfishing and we were using liver as bait. He was, he was teasing me and he threw some at me and it scared me to death. And I, oh my goodness, it was awful. But I don't know what it was about me as a kid that I was afraid of fish and minnows and all of that. But I was, but he still took me. And I'm glad he did that because th those are some of the best memories I have. I mentioned one time when I was younger wanting to learn to play guitar and my dad said, hey, robber, go out to the car and get me something. I don't know what. And he goes, it's in the back of the car. So I go out and in the car is a guitar. Didn't ask for it or anything, just mentioned that I wanted to learn to play it, and he surprised me with one. Another thing he did is he bought a Suzuki 110 motorcycle for me. In Oklahoma, you could ride a motorcycle at 14 and 15 year, years old, and I always wanted a motorcycle to ride, and so he bought one and he taught me to ride it, so I rode a motorcycle for a, a year and a half or so before I got my driver's license. That was really fun. I enjoyed riding the motorcycle. We always had go-karts, mini bikes, all kinds of fun things that boys like. Because my dad was well known in the community and he had graduated from the school in the town, pretty much everyone knew him. He was very intimidating to boys and always insisted that they come to the door to pick us up on dates. Um, if he did not like the boy, he made sure that they were not around very long. As a matter of fact, one time a much older guy was bothering my sister, who is younger than me. She was 13 or 14 at the time. And she told my dad what the guy had said to her. And he got his gun and he went and found the guy downtown and had his gun kind of barely peeking up above the car window and told the guy never to mess with his daughter again. And of course the guy didn't. He did run one guy off I liked. He did not like him, and uh, this particular young man was afraid to come in the house. I was allowed to sit outside and talk to him, but because he was afraid to come in the house, because he was afraid of my dad, my dad said he wasn't good enough to see me, and thus was eventually intimidated 
away. My dad enjoyed politics and served on the city council for a time. I campaigned for him by walking up and down streets in the neighborhoods, passing out his campaign brochures, saying, hey, this is my dad, vote for him, and all that. He won, and that was an interesting little period of time because so many people would call the house complaining because back in the day, there was a phone book with a publicized phone number in it, and everyone knew. Uh, can I speak to Bob, please? And there were some very angry people. He did make a lot of people mad, but he always thought he was doing the right thing when he voted the way he voted. He liked to help support community endeavors. One time, he dressed up in a silly costume and walked in the March of Dimes walk to raise money for that charity. My family owned a restaurant, and my dad and mom would do fundraisers for various individuals and school organizations. My favorite organization that came to the restaurant to eat was the football team. And as a teenage girl, unable to go on dates or see them at school because I was in junior high, I loved Thursday nights when they would come in. I made sure I worked then so I could see all of the high school football players. My father passed away in 1987, in April of my senior year. He died on a Saturday and I found out about his passing on my way home from an ACT test. I had gone to take the test and was going back home and I saw my mom and some friends and they waved me down and I pulled over to the side of the road and my mom told me that my dad had passed away earlier in the morning and she didn't want me going to the hospital to see him. He had been ill for a while and had been in the hospital for many weeks before he passed away. Something interesting about my dad dying in April of my senior year is that he was on the school board at the time he passed away, and his signature is on my high school diploma despite his passing away in April before I graduated in May. Despite his sometimes very tough demeanor, he was very well liked and very popular and very well known in our small town. And his funeral probably to this day is one of the largest ones they've had in the county in which I grew up. They let out school, standing room only at the funeral home. I miss him, but I've lived longer now without him than I lived with him. Sometimes I think my life would be different had he lived, um, but I'm not going back there. There are so many other stories I could tell you about my dad, but I'll stop there. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever you're watching this video. Again, thanks for watching. Bye.